Hello, my name is Ralph Nyberg. I am a senior technical instructor for New Horizons Computer Learning Center. This is a course spotlight for the CompTIA Network Plus class. The target audience for this class is entry level um, IT networking professionals. Uh, Network Plus also functions as a great springboard from an education standpoint if you were to move on into the Cisco or the Microsoft training. Uh, from a prerequisite standpoint, um, the CompTIA prerequisite is that you have basic Windows knowledge as well as basic networking understanding. So um, if you're coming into the IT education industry uh, fairly green and inexperienced, then uh, CompTIA A plus may be a good prerequisite for this class. Module one is network theory. Uh, network theory really focuses on the uh, the ability to understand and speak networking. It's very important in networking that you're able to communicate uh, with others. So a lot of this class focuses on terminology and making sure that we know exactly what the appropriate term is for a particular physical device or a particular uh, concept inside of networking. Module two is network communication methods. With networking, it, uh, there's a very layered model to networking and so we have we have to have the ability to uh, move information physically. So whether it's in the form of uh, electricity uh, traveling through copper, or if it's in the form of uh, radio waves going through the air, or light going through fiber optic. And so with this module, we really start talking about the, you know, the physical elements of the transmission across the media. Module three is um, network media and hardware. So we're continuing this discussion of the physical uh, transmissions and we start to talk about you know the actual media that we use so we discuss the characteristics of uh, fiber optics and discuss the characteristics of the different types of uh, copper cabling as well uh, as well as taking a little bit of a look at some of the uh, physical devices that are involved in the networking process uh, things like switches and uh, routers. Lesson four discusses the two most popular LAN topologies. Uh, most of you probably heard of uh, Wi-Fi. We have wireless LANs and then we also have Ethernet LANs. So in terms of local area networking, the vast majority of local area networks are either going to be Wi-Fi or they're going to be Ethernet. So this lesson is really a detailed discussion of both of those LAN physical topologies. Lesson five is networking models and this is where we discuss the uh, the OSI reference model and the TCP IP reference model. If you've had any experience with networking, you may have heard of people mention things like a layer three switch or that's a layer two process. And this is where we develop that understanding of what that means. Uh, both the TCP IP model and the OSI model define end-to-end -end communication between two hosts. And they're, it's a framework, it's a common piece of information that all of us who work in networking share. So it's very important that we understand the OSI model and the TCP IP model in order to uh, be able to read documentation and participate in discussions in networking. Module six is TCP IP addressing and data delivery. Now this section is really to me the the meat and potatoes part of the course. Uh, if you don't understand addressing then it's very difficult to troubleshoot, then it's very difficult to design, it's very difficult to implement and this is really the the one thing in networking that stays consistent you know the almost all networks are TCP IP networks the internet you know is a TCP IP network your local area network at the office is a TCP IP network and the fundamental building block for TCP IP networks is this idea of the IP address and that every device every node on your network is uniquely identifiable so this is where we learn what a TCP IP address is uh, what a subnet mask is, what a default gateway is, how do we identify the network, how do we identify if a transmission is a local transmission or a remote transmission. And regardless of where you're going to be working or regardless of what sort of further training you're going to be going into, whether it be Cisco or whether it be Microsoft, the concept and understanding of the TCP IP address will always put you a step ahead. Module seven is TCP IP services. So really the class sort of starts at the wire and works its way up through the software. And so it's great that we have this ability to move this electrical signal. And it's great that we can communicate, you know, across the world through the internet using this IP address and routing the information. But ultimately it doesn't do us any good 
unless we actually can do something useful with it. So this module really gets into the different services, things like HTTP or SMTP, and talks about you know, the actual applications and services that get used on TCP IP networks. Lesson eight is the LAN infrastructure. And again, this is another critical module. Uh, this goes into uh, the processes used by switches. Um, we look at you know, what a VLAN is. Okay? Uh, how a VLAN is configured. We also look at routing. So how information gets from here at New Horizons to Google or to Yahoo and, and an understanding of that process. So again, this is a very important piece you know, in terms of design and implementation and troubleshooting on the infrastructure that you understand how these uh, services work together in order to move your information from point A to point B. Lesson nine is WAN infrastructure. Now, anytime you know, your information leaves your facility, it's leaving the local area network and going to the wide area network. Now, in some cases, it may be a private wide area network. When, so for example, here in my Grand Rapids office, when we're sending information to our Livonia office, and then really the internet is one really, really big wide area network. So there's different technology that gets used on the wide area network or on the WAN side of things. And this module really is an overview of the different technologies that are used on the wide area network as opposed to the things like switching that we use on the local area network. Lesson 10 is remote networking. Uh, remote networking, more and more people are not just working from the office. Uh, remote networking deals with um, how do users connect to the home office when they are remote. We have you know, VPN technologies that we'll look at. We'll look at the remote desktop protocol from Microsoft. So really this lesson deals with and discusses the different techniques and methods that users will use to connect to their network when they are not in the office. Lessons 11, 12, and 13 deal with security. Uh, really they talk, touch on all aspects of securing your network. Uh, they start out by discussing different elements of uh, physical security, so controlling access to uh, the devices and the facilities in your environment. We also look at encryption. Uh, we look at encryption protocols uh, for symmetrical key encryption as well as asymmetrical key encryption and uh, public key cryptography. Uh, we look at encryption protocols for transport across the network, including IPsec. We talk a lot about different uh, methods of authentication. Uh, so. We have to make sure that our users are who they purport to be. And so there are different ways that we can authenticate our users in a networking environment. We have, you know, obviously our Windows authentication, but there's also things like 802.1x authentication for your switches and wireless access points, as well as radius and different technologies. We also look at the, the people side of it as well. Uh, so we look at, you know, social engineering uh, and the importance of education uh, in terms of making sure that our users aren't involved in uh, or, or victims of uh, social engineering attacks. Uh, so the antivirus piece is discussed as well. One of the nice things about this section is it provides a really sound framework for not only preparing yourself for the Network Plus exam, but really allowing you to uh, transition smoothly into the Security Plus class for those of you who are planning on going that, down that path in your education. All right, so lesson 14 is network management. You know, really the class, you know, as I said before, starts with the sort of the, the electronic signal and moving the data. And then we talk about the TCP IP and the language that computers speak. And then we talk about the, the services, the things that make it useful, uh, HTTP, you know, the ability to browse the web or to send email and things like that. At that point in time, sort of the way the class is set up, we now have a, you know, a functioning network. And now we start talking about managing that network and making sure that we have the ability to, to monitor our resources, to make sure that you know, we get the performance that we expect. And then also you know, to make sure that we're not having security breaches and things like that. So this section really focuses on you know, how to create a network baseline, you know, how to monitor your, and manage your systems once you have them up and running. Lesson 15 is network troubleshooting. Uh, network troubleshooting really goes through the process of developing a troubleshooting model or understanding a troubleshooting model and how to apply that in a networking context. There are a number of different tools that we use in networking. Some of you have probably heard of things like ping and traceroute and IP config, but you know, it's great to know what the tool is, but it's even better to know in what context that tool is important. So really the network troubleshooting section you know, allows us to dig a little deeper into which one of these tools is appropriate in 
a given scenario. New Horizons courseware is authorized by CompTIA and maps to the latest objectives for the Network Plus exam. This class is a great tool for preparing yourself for uh, certification. Uh, often in class, the instructor will also give you some beneficial uh, tips and helpful hints in terms of what are the best ways to make a plan and successfully pass your exam. Thank you for taking the time to view this course spotlight. Uh, again, my name is Ralph Nyberg and I'm looking forward to seeing you in class.